Oshkosh Media is. Government programming on GovTV, community programming on Life TV, and community radio on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Welcome to the City Manager's Report. A look at city updates and a preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. And thanks for joining us for another edition of the City Manager's Report. I'm Andy Radig, and in a moment we'll be joined by our Assistant City Manager, John Fitzpatrick. As usual, in the first half of today's show, we'll have some municipal news updates, including notes from city departments and things that are happening around Oshkosh. In the second half, we'll highlight some items from the upcoming Wednesday, August 14th, Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. And with that, we bring in our Assistant City Manager, John Fitzpatrick. John, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Andy. All right. Well, we have a lot to go through, a lot to do, uh, dive into today. Um, one item that uh, we should note is that the ballot drop box at City Hall, at the front entrance of City Hall, has been reinstated and that uh, folks that may have to return an absentee ballot may utilize that drop box. Right. Yes. Um, that was a decision that was made um, recently and we're happy to comply with that. I think there's been a lot of speculation associated with Dropbox safety and security, but as you can see from our video, our Dropbox is attached to the building. So I don't think you can really get more uh, secure than that. Mm -hmm. Right. Once uh, anything is, is put into there, as, as far as bills or whatever it might be, it's secured. Right. And uh, actually, as you mentioned, goes right into the building, so right. um, it can't be... Um, taken away for, for some other right. reason. It's a separate secured area um, right. that's built into the wall. So. so we should note that voters may return their absentee ballots at that drop box or uh, to the um, uh, city clerk's uh, uh, absentee voting location uh, by uh, election day, or I'm sorry, uh, they may return it. Uh, actually, they can return it to the absentee uh, ballots to the secure drop box by 4.30 p.m. on primary election day, which is August 13th. Right. I think any time before then is when it can be uh, dropped there. So That's right. Yeah, right. any time before that time. And actually, election day is August 13th, and polls will be open that day from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Right, right. And also, if you need to register to vote um, or request an absentee ballot by mail, find your polling place or view a sample ballot. You can do that on the uh, website that's listed right there on our screen. Right, myvote.wi.gov. And uh, you may also call the city, city clerk's office directly with questions. They're at 920-236-5011. Right. All right. Well, John, another thing that took place recently is National Night Out. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, it's actually been a quite a successful event for uh, our public safety folks, uh, as well as some other city departments that get involved. Right. It has been, uh, it began as just primarily a public safety event, but it's really grown beyond that. Um, a variety of our departments participate in that. Um, you're seeing some of the police officers there that um, uh, participated, but police, um, fire, our neighborhood folks, um, there's a variety of folks that participate in mm -hmm. this event. And it's really a cool opportunity for um, not only individuals to interact with our employees, but also to get out and get to interact with their neighbors a little bit and create camaraderie. Right, right. It enhances that relationship between neighbors and and also our our uh, public uh, safety folks. And um, and really, this happened uh, took place in locations all around the city. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. You can see that uh, uh, graphic right there. I, the sign with egg rolls. I'm kind of partial to that. Mm particular but I'm not uh, I don't discriminate when it comes to any sort of food group <laughs> um, but there the food was fantastic the weather was great uh, um, people were out and about and it was just a, a real fun time to be had by all for um, people of all ages you know kids mm -hmm. parents grandparents and uh, it really is a nice opportunity for people to get to know their neighbors a little bit more and 
and city employees. Absolutely, sure. And this took place on August 6th, but uh, folks can look for this event again next year in early August. Right. So, okay then John, we also wanted to make mention that the uh, capital improvement program information has been distributed to property owners and this is uh, in regards to property owners who live adjacent to an upcoming project. Uh, but we just wanted to get some information out there that, uh, that the fact that uh, the, the process is moving forward. Right, yeah, whenever we're gonna be working on a project, a street project, we try to get out and make sure we can inform uh, neighbors, answer any questions they have, and that's really the purpose of us getting out there to, to talk to them, uh, provide information to them, um, we also asked them to, to sign a construction access agreement that allows us to properly investigate and then do all the construction activities on the private property. So mm -hmm. um, I think also uh, uh, Public Works Director Robbie was working with you on a informational video, wasn't he? That's right, yeah. Uh, Public Works Director James Robbie came into our studio and recorded a program uh, with a, an overview of the upcoming 2025 proposed project. Okay, we got it on the screen. That's and great. We're, we're seeing seeing it there, sure. Yeah. And and uh, he, he took a look at what's coming up and what's involved and even great. some of the, the details about if, if you have a project uh, next year, what to expect and how access works to yeah. the street, all, all sorts of things like that. Yeah, I think it's especially important for people that might have businesses. You know, they're always concerned about how, to, how, how are people gonna access, mm -hmm. and not only businesses, but homeowners too. Right, right. So that program is available on the Oshkosh Media YouTube channel, and it will also be airing on Oshkosh Media Gov TV. Uh, if you'd like any more information about upcoming uh, proposed projects for 2025, you can also go to the Hot Topics section on the city's website, and you can look for an interactive dashboard there uh, where you have some more information about upcoming projects. Uh, the video is, is available there as well, uh, but you can also look at what is proposed in the years to come. Uh, you can even look at, at future years, 2026, 27, and right. so on. It looks like we have a graphic of that dashboard right there. It is pretty cool. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, you can select your area, you, you know, zoom in, you know, click on different streets. It kind of gives you an idea of some of the work that's planned, mm -hmm. when it's planned, um, you know, some of the things that might take place. So it really is a very informative tool. We've had a lot of citizens compliment us on that, which is really, uh, we're grateful to hear that feedback. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's there's tons of information on there and it only takes a few minutes to just click and, and check it out. Right, right, it's a great tool for folks to use. It's yeah. available and um, right from the city's website, you can access that and learn more about what's coming up. But of course they can call us at any time and, and we're happy to give them as much information as they'd like. Absolutely, they're always available for, for uh, questions. Okay, well then also John, we wanted to make mention, uh, there was a, a, a kind of a small event that took place uh, last month uh, called EAA Air Venture, actually not so small. Right. Um, and they had record attendance this year. Right, I think um, for people that live in Oshkosh and have experienced EAA, you know, it's a fabulous event. But I think one of the things that has unfortunately plagued EAA in most recent times is the weather. Mm -hmm. and. I, I, th I don't think they could have had a better week uh, concerning weather. Um, so you, we have a lot of visitors. We certainly want to you know, put our best foot forward, and I think EAA did that. Um, it was a great experience, I think, for everyone that was out there. That's right. The total attendance this year was approximately 686,000 visitors, and that is a record. Uh, the previous record was last year with 677,000. Yeah. Uh, so we had more than 10,000 aircraft arriving at Whitman Regional Airport and other airports in this uh, area of the state. Uh, international attendees from 98 countries, a total of 2,580 some international vi visitors. Right. Um, and there's great econ economic impact with this as well. Well, and I think, you know, to put it in perspective, it's, it's almost uh, precisely 10 times the size of our community, you mm -hmm. know, with the uh, the amount of visitors that, that come here. And, um, and I think, uh, 
it's it's always exciting it's always fun i know a lot of people you know open their homes to people that come here and and have relationships with people all over the world so mm-hmm. um it's it's something that one of the one of many things that make oshkosh unique absolutely sure well just wanted to highlight that uh, it was a it was a great event this year yep Okay, uh, speaking of great events, our Oshkosh Parks Department actually has been very busy all summer. Uh, they're busy all year, but yeah. they're busy with a lot of events, especially in the summer. And uh, we just wanted to talk, talk about a few of those things that are coming up. And uh, if folks have not been to the Brews on the Bay event, they are missing out and they need to go to the next one that is on August 21st. Right, right. Um, for folks that haven't been to Brews on the Bay, it's it's, it's, it's designed around the idea of more of a laid back event where people can just enjoy the park itself, sample some craft beer. I know there's food trucks that uh, are available there. There's also some music there. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's been a great response to that. I think the parks department does a fantastic job. Um, you know, our parks and facilities are second to none in the state of Wisconsin, um, mm-hmm. not only from the physical uh, landscape, but also the programming. I, I think they want to try to appeal to a whole variety of um, people in the community and what they'd like to do. And um, Brews on the Bay is one, but I know you wanted to talk about some of the other things also that parks programs for people's enjoyment. Sure, sure. By the way, Brews on the Bay will be held at Rainbow Memorial Park, so right. just, just to highlight that. Right. Uh, but they also have an event called Live at the Leech, and that is held at the Leech Amphitheater, and it's a, a free concert series held on Tuesday nights. The next one is coming up on Tuesday, August 13th, and the gates open at 5.30, and the featured band this time around is Pink Houses. Right. I think we... Uh, talked about this on one of the other shows that I was um, filling in on and um, this uh, activity on Tuesday nights, the free concerts on Tuesday nights has really taken off. Mm -hmm. I think they changed the format a little bit. I think it's once a month they have some really good bands that they have secured and we've had some pretty large crowds out there. Yes. I think Mm -hmm. it's taken a while for people to just realize it and understand the quality of entertainment out there not only musically, but, you know, other things that are provided for the entire family. So uh, bounce houses, food trucks, uh, it's just a nice thing to get out and enjoy for free. Sure. Yeah, it's a great thing to do on a Tuesday night, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, of course, uh, folks can find all the details about this uh, at the Oshkosh Parks Department uh, webpage. And they can also learn more on the Parks Department uh, uh, Facebook page. Right. And uh, uh, they also have a uh, activity guide that has details about everything as well uh, throughout the whole year. Right. And I think that's a new uh, product that they uh, rolled out this year too, and it's uh, it's very good. Right. And that is available also through the uh, Parks Department uh, uh, website. And uh, we also just wanted to make a note that folks should save the date for the upcoming. Oshkosh's first ukulele festival, and that will be on Saturday, September 28th at the Oshkosh Senior Center. Right, yeah. Um, I know there are a lot of people looking forward to this, uh, and I think I mentioned uh, before my son, who is a music teacher and an orchestra director, Mm -hmm. um, is interested in this. So he's a ukulele uh, aficionado, Mm -hmm. so I'm sure he's going to do everything he can to be here. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, it's just another... um, neat uh, programming initiative that's bringing for, brought forward by Parks. Sure, sure. Yeah, there's, there's kind of an underground movement with ukulele yeah, uh, festival right. here. Yeah. So this is, this is great. Okay. All right, then, John, we also want to highlight that uh, a reminder that our boards and commissions for the city are seeking members and that we encourage people to give it some thought and to put an application in. Right. The, the best way to help support the community, I think, is through active participation. And I know we talk about that a lot uh, via Oshkosh Media. Mm -hmm. But boards and commission participation is extremely important. Um, We have a variety of boards and commissions. We want people's ideas. We want their thoughts. We want them to be involved. And I think that helps us, you know, arrive at the best decisions possible. Mm -hmm. The boards and commissions, some of the ones that are available are listed there in our screen. And 
you know, staff and uh, elected officials rely on the input of citizens that participate on those boards and commissions. So it's it's very important. Mm -hmm. And we know everybody's busy, but if you do have some time that you're willing to share, I think it's a great way to help support your community. Sure. And I, I believe that the council will be making some appointments to some of those boards and commissions in this upcoming agenda. I think so. Okay. And uh, speaking of the agenda, John, we might as well just uh, roll right into uh, discussion about the upcoming council agenda. All right. Um, again, that uh, upcoming common council meeting will be held on Wednesday, August 14th. And, you know, just a note there that typically these meetings are always on Tuesdays by ordinance. And this is a change. This is on Wednesday. Uh, right. So, so if you could give us some insight why it's on Wednesday. Sure. Yes. The reason this particular meeting is on Wednesday is because we have a primary election on Tuesday the 13th. And by ordinance in the city of Oshkosh, whenever there's a, an election day where a council meeting falls on that day, then the meeting is moved to the very next day, which in this case is August 14th. Okay, very good. So just wanted to highlight that for folks that this meeting will be on Wednesday the 14th. Right. All right, that meeting will start off with a closed session. And, um, you know, normally we don't really get into a uh, discussion about closed sessions that much, but is there anything that you could share? Uh, not too much other than uh, the fact, and this is listed on the agenda anyway, that it's uh, with respect to the boat works property. And I think people are familiar with that. It looks like we have a graphic there. It's a redevelopment, um, potential redevelopment that is located at West 4th Ave and Michigan Street. It's uh, where the boat works and where the old sanitation garage is. So I think it is a unique location and I'm excited to see what might come of it. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot going on over there. So yeah. we'll continue to watch it uh, as it improves. Right. All right, then we also have an item where uh, we have an introduction of staff and uh, we have uh, folks from several different departments that are uh, taking on new new roles. Right, I know that's something we don't ordinarily talk about in the, uh, in the council agenda, but y yes, there are several employees that um, actually are being promoted. And for po folks that may not know, um, we went, underwent a recent uh, reorganization in our field operations facility, which encompasses our streets, sanitation, and central garage. And um, so two of the individuals that are being promoted, um, I think uh, previously uh, worked as, worked their way up in the organization, you know, started out um, um, and then made their way to uh, lead worker positions, mm -hmm. but now are being promoted to street, street supervisor positions. And it's, it's gratifying to, you see that kind of dedication to the organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just want people to know that we support our employees and we wanna try to provide as many opportunities to them as we can. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I know that recruitment is a large part of what uh, Human Resources does and uh, so, you know, great to see that uh, folks can advance in their positions. Uh, but, you know, speaking of recruitment, we also have an agenda item uh, where we are uh, talking about city manager recruitment. And that is uh, a big topic that will be uh, coming forward. And, you know, I thought that uh, since we have you here today on the program, maybe we could talk a little bit about how that process works and, um, you know, and. And honestly, city manager Roloff has had a, a distinguished ca career here at Oshkosh, and and uh, you know we we uh, are uh, uh, sad to see him go, but uh, uh, but we we move along with the process. Right, of course. Anytime our employees leave, you know we're sad to see him go, but we're happy for them because they have an opportunity to um, enjoy retirement. And city manager Roloff is certainly no different. You know it, it was. It was a good maybe segue. We were talking about other employees who've done a great job for us and then have earned promotions. And you know, in in consideration of people who have done a great job for us, I'm glad that I have the opportunity to fill in so we can talk about this because um, I have a chance to work pretty closely with City Manager Roloff and have for I guess uh, 16 years now. Mm -hmm. And um, and I know him well enough to know that he would be the last person to talk about. Mm -hmm. the good job that he has mm -hmm. done sure. so yeah. so uh, I'm I'm happy to fill in in that capacity and also share that uh, with the citizens um, to talk about his 
performance um, it's just been fantastic I think that just like in any industry people get to know um, other people that do what what they do mm -hmm. and um, in the public sector it's really no different um, and just to give you an idea I think I don't think it's a exaggeration to state that um, city manager Roth is if not the most respected public uh, employee leader in the state of Wisconsin he's certainly one of the most respected and that really has a profound impact not only on the community but also on the organization we we're talking about employees and recruitment and things like that mm -hmm. the word gets out about what an organization is like how successful they are how they may or may not support their employees um, our city councils has done a great job doing that our citizens have done a great job but their hire of uh, city manager Roloff 16 years ago mm -hmm. was a an excellent decision and it's really paid dividends for you know our community and uh, as, as you said I'm, I'm gonna be sad to see him go but I'm happy for he and his family and you know the the next chapter of his life and some of the things that he was gonna have an opportunity to to take on right absolutely yeah it's a it's a, a major uh, change in in one's life to take that retirement step it is so um, you know and and, and I, I guess as we're looking forward uh, here uh, in in the agenda you know we're looking at recruitment and uh, what might be the next steps uh, from the city's standpoint with this sure I can I can speak to that a little bit um, so th some of the next steps that are going to take place uh, the in HR, we work with a variety of different recruitments, but when we have a recruitment of the magnitude of city manager, mm -hmm. um, it's always, we're not ashamed to say that it, it's helpful to get additional assistance. And in this case, it certainly is the case. You know, we, uh, uh, we are recommending um, a search firm to assist us in this process. Mm -hmm. And the search firm that we're recommending is one that's recognized as um, a Midwestern leader in public sector recruitment, mm -hmm. but also has a national reach. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important for this type of position. We wanna leave no stone unturned. We wanna get absolutely the best person that we possibly can for this position because it's very, very important. Mm -hmm. It's a very complex job. Um, it's uh, not only technical, but I think there are other skills that are required um, you know, the budgets, uh, the environment in which uh, regulations are placed on municipalities. It's just a very challenging position. And um, I think we need to do our best to try to get somebody that can do the best job possible for the citizens mm -hmm. and the employees and um, preserve the reputation that I think uh, Oshkosh has established over time, which is to be a leader in the state of Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. So. We have many, many uh, municipalities contact us and our individual departments for assistance with all kinds of different things because yes. they recognize that. And, you know, that's, uh, it's gratifying. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I think our employees know that that standard is what's expected not only from uh, each other, but, but the citizens. So mm -hmm. um, this search firm, I think, is going to help us uh, achieve that. Mm -hmm. And what sort of timeline are we looking at? I think typically uh, it should take about 14 weeks. I mean that's a rough timeline and it looks like we have a graphic here. Um, the the uh, consultant will work with the council and also you know have dialogue with HR about a recruitment plan and then uh, you know get some advertising out there, do some evaluation of uh, candidates, applicants, and then uh, present some candidates to the council for consideration and then there'll be an interview process and, and I think that'll certainly include um, interactivity with uh, the public mm -hmm. and then the appointment. Just roughly I think the goal is to try to get somebody uh, secured by Thanksgiving potentially and then city manager Roloff's uh, retirement date is in January so to have someone have adequate time to work with their current employer and then hopefully join us in January. That's mm -hmm. the goal. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I know that uh, the city manager is 
the one employee of the council. So that's sort of the dynamic of how this works. Absolutely, and I think that's good that you point that out. I think, yes, the council directs the city manager. Mm -hmm. The city manager directs all other city employees. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. It's a unique uh, opportunity for this council to select a city manager. It doesn't happen very often. Right. Um, and, you know, it's a big responsibility, but I think they'll do a great job with this. HR is certainly uh, poised to help in any way they can. Mm -hmm. And um, this firm, you know, pending their approval, I know will do a good job to help them um, make the best decision they can. Okay. Well, I know we'll be talking a lot more about this as we move forward. Right. Uh, but thanks for all those insights onto it. You're welcome. All right, then on the consent agenda, we have an item. Uh, we are uh, making an agreement along with Winnebago County for reconstruction of County Highway I, that's Oregon Street. And uh, this project actually began way back in 2018. And I believe that this is the final phase of, of this work. I think you're right, Andy. I think it's South 35th to Ripple. Mm -hmm. That's the stretch. And I believe that um, the reason this is being brought forward is there's some increased costs because there's a there's a huge sewer interceptor that's going to go into that area, and I think that's going to be a welcome improvement. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, we also are uh, waiving some purchasing requirements uh, for some protective equipment for the fire department. Right, I think for people that look at the agenda and think, hey, why would we waive purchaser re purchasing requirements in this context? Um, we talked a little bit about um, our employees earlier, and um, because this is personal protective equipment, safety equipment, they work very closely with our safety and risk management officer, mm -hmm. but also we want their input. We want them to understand what we're getting, why we're getting it, and we also want their input mm -hmm. because we want them to not only be safe but comfortable when they're working. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a way for us to establish a committee to allow them to have input into that process. Okay. So that's really what this is about. All right. And then we have a new resolution where uh, we are uh, approving a plan uh, regarding the parking lot reconstruction over by the former Oshkosh Northwestern newspaper building. Right. I think people may have recall may recall that um, that that uh, building was is been purchased and there's a plan there to put a hotel and restaurant. And I think that you know because of all the um, difficulty securing contractors, um, this project doesn't move forward quite as quickly as we had hoped, but now that that's loosening up for everyone, I think that it's, uh, it's exciting to know that this project is gonna go forward. And you know, based on the track record of the developer, I have no doubt that um, this will be done uh, very well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it's another exciting development downtown. Right, absolutely. We'll be keeping an eye on, uh, eye on that one. Um, and then we also wanted to point out that we are getting into our budget season here, and our budget workshop number two with the council is coming up on August 28th. Right, yes. Um, that budget workshop will focus primarily on some big cost drivers, one of them being uh, wage increases and the other one being health insurance. So we'll talk about a variety of different, different budget items, but, but those two are, are probably the most significant. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in the minute we have left here, John, uh, we have an emergency purchase of roof repairs uh, for the public library. Right, I, I have you know, some intimate knowledge associated with that because facilities is one of the divisions in my department. And uh, yeah, we had an initial leak in the library and we thought we had it fixed, but we, we discovered additional leaks. So we uh, conducted some experiments and found um, some unique problems with some of the rough, uh, the unique rough structure of the library. So I think we have it uh, resolved, mm -hmm. and, but it needed to get taken care of as quickly as possible. And that uh, was declared an emergency by city manager Roloff and we were able to take care of it as quickly as we could and then hopefully as cost effective as we could because of we already had the group on site to continue repairs. Okay, very good. Well, John, we covered a lot today. Uh, that was that was a, a mouthful of, of information there. Yeah. So we really appreciate you joining us and thanks for your insights. Thank you for inviting me, Andy.
All right, and thank you for joining us today for the program. Again, that Common Council meeting is at 6 p.m. this Wednesday, August 14th. You can watch that live on Spectrum Channel 10, UVerse Channel 99, and streaming on YouTube and oshkoshmedia.org. And please, again, join us in two weeks for another City Manager's Report. Thanks for tuning in.